So historically, over several decades, and we've been living through what's called a post-genomic era. So uh, from uh, the early 2000s, glioblastoma genomes have been routinely sequenced. And there's been a lot of uh, research in that area, a lot of excitement for what was heralded as molecular targeted therapy. So this is um, using drugs that are already available or designing new drugs that are targeting specific mutations or pathways in uh, for glioblastoma patients. Unfortunately, every single one of those molecular target therapies failed phase two trials. So phase two is where we look for efficacy, some kind of effect of those drugs. So in recent years, there's been a, a complete change in philosophy and a, a radical rethink of how we conduct our research and how we identify new therapies for, for, uh, for, for new next generation therapies. So collectively, all the drugs we've tested have been predicated on the highly proliferative genotype of glioblastoma. And, and this is derived from um, samples from the core of the tumor where the, there's a high density of proliferating cells. So therapy has been predicated on proliferation and this has failed. And now we know that due to what's called intratumor heterogeneity, i.e. if you sample from different regions of the glioblastoma tumor uh, for each individual patient, you see different biology. And because all our patients have surgery as a frontline therapy, we now know that the, the tumor that's removed from the brain is not reflective of the infiltrative disease which remains. So after surgery, um, the residual disease that is left behind is so minimal that in post uh, operative imaging follow-up. Um, it's invisible. You can't detect that disease, but we know it's there. And unfortunately, over several weeks and months, that manifests as a recurrent tumor, at which point it is incurable. So for, for a long time, we have studied the biology of what's been taken out and not what is left behind. So this 5A uh, fluorescence-guided surgery has allowed our neurosurgeons to collect infiltrative tumor samples from further out than we ever did before. So it's where the, these residual diseases blending into the normal brain. And that has given us a new insight into not the proliferative tumor, but the infiltrative tumor. And so our study, the, the work we presented is our, our findings on how the infiltrative disease differs in terms of its, the gene expression compared to the core regions of the tumor.